Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Truven at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're gonna be uh, looking at a very special deck. Uh, we're gonna be checking out the monster deck with Dagon, obviously, because you can see our Lord and Savior on the screen right now. Um, but Dagon has some of his wives with him, and uh, that's why we call this deck Dagon's Wives. Let's head into the deck builder to uh, figure out what this deck is all about. As the deck name kind of already states, this is a Dagon deck, but I've added some uh, spicy additions to this. Mainly the Keltalus with Cave Troll combo is also in this deck. That might seem a little bit weird at first glance, but once you see this deck in action, you'll see uh, how powerful this deck can be. I think I've played around 30 matches with this and I've ranked up like... I've just flown through the ranks because I was a bit behind because um, I haven't played too much in the previous two seasons. Um, but yeah, um, this is a Dead Wish deck with a very high skill, well not skill ceiling, skill ceiling maybe a little bit, uh, but uh, point ceiling, um, where you can give yourself card advantage over and over and over again, especially in the final rounds, and I'm hoping we get some of those uh, spicy matches in a minute. We're going to be going through each and every single card in this deck one by one, already highlighting a few of the combinations that you can do with this deck. If you're not interested in that, you can also uh, go immediately to the example matches using the timeline down below, which should be nicely segmented into the pieces of this video. As always, you will also find this deck in the description down below. So there's a link to the Play Grant website. You can click it, import this deck into your own game, and then uh, let me know what you think of it, uh, because every bit of feedback is really appreciated. You can upvote it there as well, which also helps me uh, growing the channel a little bit, even though Gwent is in its final years. We still look out for that. So let's head into the cards. So this is a Death Wish deck, which means that we need to find the right balance between Death Wish units, so units that get, have an effect when they die, and then other units where we can destroy those units with. So Andrega Warrior is one of the latter, so a consumer, four power for four provisions, and on the ploy you consume your adjacent units. Um, so that means the one on the left and the one on the right, uh, if they're are any of course. Uh, for each consumed insectoid you gain another charge on its order ability and uh, the order ability is you spawn a drone on this row so if you uh, kill two insectoids with this ability you have uh, seven points and two consumes um, but this is rarely going to be seven points it's mainly for the consumes which is of course generating points on its own right. Next up we have a single purify option in the pallor for power for four provisions and we have a bit of a special use case for this card. We're going to be able to use this card to uh, purify Dagon in specific instances. Of course if that's not something that you want to do you can also use him to purify any of the state's effects that you want to get rid of away from one of your units. Next up we have our first Death Wish unit so the bridge troll we have two of those in the deck four power for four provisions and on Death Wish you boost the lowest power allied unit by four. So if you kill it it's eight points for four but of course the consume kind of has like a value in the provisions counted uh, in the uh, the card itself, like for example, Ikrei Hawaii has two consumes, but if you don't consume insectoids, you basically only have five points on the card itself for four provisions. So combining the two, if you have um, the Andrega Wari and the Bridge Troll, Bridge Troll is eight, Warrior is five, meaning that you have 13 points for four twice, well, two times four provisions, which kind of levels out. So that's how that Wish is kind of balanced. Next up, another set of that Wish units, Foglets, also four power for four provisions. And on that Wish, they spawn Fog on the opposite row for, two, for three turns. Fog um, damages the lowest unit on that row by two. Um, so meaning that technically Foglet has a cap of 10 points in total, which is pretty, pretty good. Then we have a few more consumers, the Seleno Harpy, we have two of those as well. Five power for four provisions on the ploy, you consume an allied unit. And if you have another Seleno Harpy already on the board, you also spawn a Harpy Egg on this row. The Harpy Egg is a Dead Wish unit for three power. And if you kill it, you spawn a Harpy of six power and summon it to this row. So two Seleno Harpies gives you two consumes, a Harpy Egg, and the Harpy itself. So that's 19 points for two times four provisions if you can pull off the bonded combo, which is uh, pretty nice. Then one Spores, I included this compared to the original decklist that I started with from uh, Team Elderblood, of course, um, where we reset the power of a unit. Uh, I did this because I did take Korati Heatwave out of this deck, which was kind of risky at first because I felt like I had no um, destroy option 
uh, at that point. Uh, but the deck is strong enough on its own to function without it. So uh, we're going to see how that works out. But Spores gives you a final say on a very powerful unit that your opponent might have boosted. Or just to reset one of your own um, pretty high base power units that you can set back to their original power. Next up, two Sirens. Again, this deck is called Dag Dagon's Wives. So uh, the Sirens are the first of his wives, if you can call it that. Four power for five provisions on order can consume an allied unit. So it's an order ability, you need to wait a turn. But on that wish, they also boost adjacent allied units by two. So you have a consume and a death wish unit in the same unit, which is really, really nice. And in total, they go for eight points for five provisions, but with an extra consume if you manage to pull that off. Then we have uh, another uh, batch of sultry ladies, the succubus. Five power for five provisions and has a bit of a complicated death wish ability. At the end of your turn, if there is another succubus in your graveyard, you summon this succubus, so self, from your graveyard to a random row and gain doomed. Um, if you're at Adrenaline 4, so 4 cards or less in your hand, you don't gain Doom, so you can technically destroy her over and over again. The prerequisite is that there is another Succubus in the graveyard when she is moved to the graveyard by dying. Um, this can be confusing because it kind of feels like if you have one in the graveyard and this one dies, it's the other one that's pulled out. That's not the case, it's the same one that is pulled out. In certain circumstances, that difference can mean a lot. Um, if we get to that during the matches, I'll, I'll elaborate on that further, but just keep that in mind. If you have a succubus in the graveyard, it's always the one that dies next that is resurrected over and over again. So uh, try not to get your second succubus uh, killed before you have Adrenaline 4. Then we have Abaya. Abaya was already a pretty powerful card, so 4 power for 6 provisions has Tribe, so gains a point every time you play a unit that is higher in power than her. And on the ploy you trigger an allied unit's death wish ability. Um, this is not limited by uh, color in any way, shape or form, so you can do bronze or gold cards. It doesn't matter, so even some of our most powerful death wish cards, you will be able to trigger that effect again. There is... There are a few options with this card that are really, really juicy, and I hope I can show them off. But mainly it uh, incorporates copying Dagon as much as possible. Next up we have Kron, a very big consume unit. Uh, this unit actually has a lot of uses. So 6 power for 8 provisions has immunity, and on the ploy you can consume 3 allied units. Depending on the matchup, I think um, Nilfgaard with the self-boosting, enemy-boosting archetype, um, what's it called? Uh, Toussaint Trois Hospitality, I think, is the leader ability. Um, this card is invaluable. Um, you can consume your highest power units and just get all those points on a single card that is immune, so that your opponent can't target it anymore. Meaning that they also can't um, generate extra points from the boost that they've given you. So you can capitalize on that and keep the boost that your opponent have, has given you. With Keltullus, um, Kron also gives you a lot of options to clear your own board and keep Keltullus and Kron on the board and then just forcing your opponent into a very awkward round where they will always get one of their units destroyed if they can't con counter uh, Keltullus, of course. So very versatile card, aside, aside from the fact that it, it just also allows you to consume three allied units, so triggering three Death Wish units in the same go. Then we have Doldu Lock, or one and only location card, mainly to get a third Succubus option. Uh, so it has re Resilience, and on the ploy you spawn and play a Succubus, Fuka, Chimera, or Hybrid. If you don't need the third Succubus, you can also pick Chimera to get another uh, Consume, which is usually the more interesting option. The other ones are not really that interesting, I think. Because uh, Hybrid also has a Consume, but it's on, um, uh, with only four points on the card itself. So Chimera is always the better option, and Fuka is only to get you some Thrive points. Uh, so either Succubus or Chimera will be interesting. And then on order, you move the highest power unit to the top of your deck and spawn a drone on both sides of this card. It's usually seven points on the card itself, but it gives you, if you play this early enough, uh, your highest power unit on the, the top of your deck. Don't do this if you're facing Nilfgaard, because you'll lose that card probably. Um, but otherwise, this is just a very good setup card as well. Then we have a couple of tutors. So Whispering Hillock is the first one, an organic card where we play any Deathwish unit from our choice from the deck. Usually used to get one of our final golds out of the deck if we need to. And then our other tutor is also Double Cross, where we play the highest power unit from your deck. This deck has been uh, tailored specifically to be able to always guess which card this is going to be. Um, so we have a card that is 9 power, 8 power, 7 power and 6 power. So those are the four top cards in our deck. 
Uh, if you're missing one of those and you play all those double cross, you always know what you're going to get. So it's Keltullus with 9 power, Dagon with 8 power, the Cave Troll with 7 power, or Arakas Queen with 6 power. So you always know what you get unless uh, you have very little cards left in your deck, but then you'll be able to see uh, what you're going to get as well. And there we have Cave Troll. Cave Troll, very important. So 7 power and 4 armor uh, with Defender for 9 provisions. So it's basically the Defender of Keltullus and Dagon. Um, so you can play this card early because we also have which is Sabbath in this deck, which is probably the next one. No, Arakas Queen is first. Um, so Arakas Queen is also going to come in handy very, very often. Uh, you can either use her to uh, copy Keltullus or you can use her to copy Dagon, which is probably the better option here. So six power on deploy, you consume an allied unit. On order, you spawn and play Arakas Nest, so that gives you 10 points and a consume already. But on Death Wish, you spawn a base copy of the consumed unit on this row. So it basically allows you to copy any unit in your deck. Um, and it's it's going to be very fun to see that combo play out. And there we have Witch's Sabbath, so another organic card where you summon up to three highest power units from your opponent's graveyard to an enemy row. So you select an enemy row, uh, it puts the three highest power units from your opponent's deck uh, graveyard on that row. So you need to check beforehand if there's nothing row locked or interesting that your opponent might be able to use. Uh, but if you manage to do that, then you will also summon the highest power units from your own graveyard to the opposite row and give them doomed. Um, this will allow you to resurrect um, the three units that we actually talked about. Dagon not, the Dagon has doomed usually, unless we purify it away which is why the Paler comes in handy, but that's going to be Keltullus, Cave Troll, and Arakas Queen. Um, or something of 5 power if you don't have any of those in your graveyard. So very, very powerful because it basically allows you to play all of your golds again. Because uh, all of those have a passive effect, um, which probably your opponent will not have on the units that are being summoned. And now we have Brewers, another one of Dagon's wives. Brewers Ritual, 5 power for 11 provisions, and it's usually going to be our starting play. Uh, she just has a Death Wish ability where you summon the two, well, two random bronze Death Wish units from your deck to this row. If you can play this multiple times using, for example, your Stratagem, you already thin your deck by four cards, which is very, very handy uh, to start out with. And those cards are Death Wish units that just generate a lot of points, uh, so you'll get a nice head start as well. And there we have Keltullus herself, because um, yeah, even Keltullus matches with Dagon's Wives, because Keltullus is a female dragon. Um, Keltullus, 9 power for 13 provisions, and while she is on the melee row, at the end of your turn, destroy the lowest power unit on the side with the most units. So that's something that you'll always need to keep in mind. There's a lot of ways in this deck to generate more units, um, but you want to scale that back a little bit if you have Keltullus on the board. If you can scale it back so that you always get one of your own units destroyed, either make sure that it's a Death Wish unit that gets destroyed, or just spawn any of the many ways of getting some Arakas drones on the board. Uh, so there we, we we have the Andrega Warrior who can do that, the uh, Doldu Lok, and of course the Arakas Queen herself. Um, so that's just a backup for just in case you can't pull off the Keltullus just destroys your opponent's swarm play. Uh, Keltullus is just devastating against any Northern Realms decks these days. Uh, Reavers gets destroyed. Um, I've seen a couple of Commandos decks in plays as well. Uh, Commandos gets destroyed just as much uh, because they just spam the board with a lot of units. And uh, Keltullus just eats them up. And then last, but definitely not least, we have Dagon Promised. So Dagon is a very recent card um, that follows the same uh, trend of some of the other cards that were introduced with him where he evolves after you win a round. So not just when you go to a certain amount of rounds, he only evolves if you win a round. This ability that you see right now, we don't want to really use. Um, it is still pretty useful. So eight power for 40 provisions, you on deploy, you infuse five units in your deck with that wish, boost the lowest power allied unit by two and worship Dagon, and then spawn Call of the Depths. It's very complica complicated, the Call of the De Depths is a relic in your graveyard that just counts the amount of times you've worshipped Dagon. If you've done that four, time, you, four times, you spawn this card um, on the board again, so a copy basically uh, on the melee row and then banish the artifact in the deck. Um, very difficult to pull off, he also has an, uh, a consumability, uh, and whenever you play a Deathwish unit, you also boost it by one. 
It's still a pretty good card, but the counter to that is Dagon Risen. So once you've won a round, Dagon um, evolves into the Risen form, where he turns into a Deathwish unit with no other abilities aside from the Deathwish. But the Deathwish actually it's gains extra abilities uh, depending on how long Dagon stays on the board. So um, at the end of every one of your turn, the counter is increased, and based on the counter, you have multiple abilities. The first one is you summon the lowest bronze uh, death wish unit from your graveyard to the to this row. You'll have plenty of those in the graveyard, so you can do that all day all day long. Second counter, which you get immediately if you just leave him alive on the board, is boost all allied units on this row by one. The third one is spawn storm for two turns on the opposite row, which can be crippling in its own right. The fourth one is damage the two lowest power enemy units by two, so another four points of damage. But the fifth one is the money shot. The fifth one allows you to spawn a base copy of self in your hand. This technically allows you, I think the maximum I've gotten so far is playing him seven times. Because um, you just get a copy of him in your hand and you can play that again. If you manage to get to another five turns, you get another one. Um... If you use Abaya, um, either on a 5 turn Dagon or on an Arakas Queen who has eaten Dagon, you generate another one. Arakas Queen, of course, herself also generates another one. Uh, and there's also a very slight option where you uh, purify Dagon. So the first time he gets to the graveyard, you can summon him back again with a uh, Witch's Sabbath, which is another option, but I don't think you can really... It, it, all cards would need to really align to get all of that going at the same time. So my record for now has been seven times uh, Dagon on the board, but it's just hilarious to see it go off. I think my maximum point total at a certain point was 178, um, just because of the amount of Dagons. And my opponent gracefully allowed me to just check out how far I could push this. Uh, but you get a card in your hand every single time, so you gain card advantage as well. Uh, over and over again. So every time you get the fifth turn to uh, take effect, you get an extra card in your hand, giving you another turn for any of the other Dagons to go further into this chain. Um, and if you time it perfectly, you can have a Dagon at five every single turn, and technically the loop could go on forever. Uh, but at a certain point, you won't be able to uh, consume them, of course, to trigger the effect. But very cool card, uh, as long as your opponent doesn't kill it before the fifth turn. And then of course our stratagem is still the Urn of Shadows in Deathwish decks. Very powerful, so in order you trigger the Deathwish of an allied unit, no longer bound by bronze. Uh, so you can trigger uh, Brewers, usually uh, in the first round, to get a huge head start. And then our leader ability obviously is Overwhelming Hunger. Destroy an allied unit and spawn an Ekimara in its row, of 3 power of course, and boost it by the destroyed unit's power. So you can do that twice. It's an extra consume, gives you 6 points in total, but the consumes is where it's at, of course, uh, kind of countering uh, any counterplay from your opponent. And that's it for the explanation of the deck. It was a little bit long-winded just because of how complex Dagon can get. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can trigger some fancy combos in the example matches. All right, first up is Nilfgaard, which is very fitting. I think I think the last 10 matches I've played, all of them were Nilfgaard, which is kind of insane. We don't start, but we do have a very good starting hand. Um, is there anything I really need here? So I can't pull Keltalus now, because I have Whispering Hillock instead. Might actually get rid of Arakas Queen here, because I have an option to pull her with. Um, and I'll get rid of the bridge troll. We get a reset. Won't be able to play Kaltalus, but I do have Dagon in hand already, which is good. I just need to manage to win the first round. Oh boy. Okay. That could have been way worse. I've seen that as a starting play a few times now. Uh, let's start with the cave troll to get just a little bit of uh, defense going. And then even with the cave troll, I need to be careful because the color and the leader ability. Uh, are all on the board. But if they have a Purify, I want to see it go now rather than later. Or that. That's usually the second option that we get. I'm going to use the Leader Ability Charge here on uh, Brewer's Ritual just to be able to get that ability going. And that's basically what I was expecting. So that's really good. I'm going to bait out. Probably the first lock I'm going to bait out is with Siren. Uh, but as you can see, we do get a very big advantage if we use Brewis 
she gave us like 17 points and that's without triggering the death wishes that are now on the board. Um, I did also use a leader ability charge of course. Oh boy. I won't be able to do anything against that I'm afraid. And they're gonna keep playing this I'm presuming. Okay. Tactic from hands and then we get the tourney chest on the siren I'm presuming. Yeah, there we go. But that does trigger the leader ability. Uh, the leader ability, not the leader ability. The, um, the death wish ability. Okay, I'm a bit awkward with my consumes now because they do fit in between, but then I generate like a very big unit. Uh, not that that's too much of a problem. Um, Arakas Queen is still in the deck. I could get another Siren out just to get rid of the tutor, uh, but then I don't have the tutor for later. Might as well try. It's just to bait out the lock. Mm. Although there are like three locks. So I don't really need to bait out the lock. It's just sad that I can't really consume... Um, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. I don't have Keltala, so... There's no real other re way for me to... Clear this out. And then we get Matahuru. Huri. Huri, huri, huri. So we're 10 points ahead. I could push this even further. Because they haven't locked anything yet. I'm gonna put the bridge troll here. Because I'm going to just let the... Okay, fair enough. Defender there. And I'm just going to consume it as well. Um, I'm also going to take the drone so I get another charge on the drones here. And that also takes down the last fog. Meaning that if they don't get over us now... We can pass and we get card advantage, but this might not be the case here. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That is fine. It's actually pretty good. Don't actually know what they would take here. Although, they can destroy whatever they want with... Oh no, it's just gonna be Fuka. That means they don't have... So we do have card advantage now. I'm just gonna boss here because it's still we're still 15 points ahead so they're gonna be needing to pull their way to even get to that 15 points or so use a leader charge even Ooh, this is gonna be they could grass again please don't get killed tell us or something like okay that's good it's really good um, they're gonna have to use at least one leader charge here. So to get two points from the... It's 36. Yeah, one leader charge. Oh, they're not even doing it. It can't be, right? Just tap... Tap the... You... We have a strategy. Why are you... Why are they not using it? Are they doing this on purpose? What the hell is going- just tap this! So they are jacking up their own deck size, and I think the last card that entered my graveyard was Cantarella. So they did get two extra Cantarella, so I just need to make sure that I have everything I need in my hand, and I need to get rid of tutors. Because tutors are gonna be useless. Um, 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 um. So there is a succubus in the graveyard. I'm gonna keep this just in case there's a Colgrim. And then we're gonna grab this, I suppose. So that's another tutor. Okay, that's actually good. I can tutor um, Keltalus out if this is not. Okay. It's really good. It can lock Keltalus, but I get it uh, for the final round then. Um, so I'm gonna tin my own deck, which is gonna be absolutely stupid. I could also just grab. The Cantarella now, because they're going to try and do that again. Uh, they also have Coup de Gras in their hands, I'm presuming. I'm going to just do this. I have enough card advantage, I think. So I just want to limit them enough that they don't get over. I, I, I still have enough cards to draw, let me put it that way. And there goes Abaya, okay. Okay, I'm... Um, Gonna play Keltalus now. Um, just to make sure that I get him. Her. I'm just gonna say him and I'm gonna eat the Cantarella. There's a bit of delay on my controls here, but 
it's fine. And then they can coup the grass that, but that's just giving... Okay, that's actually good. It's actually fine, I'm gonna automatically be generating points now. Uh, because Kaltalus will start killing things. Of course, the Harpy Egg is an issue, but... There we go. I think we have this. It's a Tony Joust. That gives me an extra two points. It could lock it again, but... Okay, I... Think... So now Kaltalus is gonna eat the... Um, Harpy Egg, unless I place a unit so i'm basically giving up my succubus chain here uh because otherwise reset would have also worked because that's four points on the harpy but then the egg would get eaten wait a second the egg would get eaten but afterwards i can pass again right i think i can do this oh this is tricky i'm just counting on my own skills here there we go okay Whew. That's good. That's good. Uh, I don't have the Defender, and they still have a single lock. Oh, one of my cards was a Tutor. Right, they didn't pull the Tutor card. It's fine. So I have one card that's basically useless, but the opponent only has three cards, so what, what's gonna... What's gonna give? I'm really tempted to just use Dagon now already. But it's not going to be a good idea, I think. What do they have? What would get spawned? So the Cave Troll, Matahuri, and then either the Seleno Harpy, Imperial Practitioner. Okay. okay, so that's just an assassination, which is good. I'm going to have to play... Oh, wait. You know what? This card is useless, so I'm just going to do this. I mean, I, I already have this, right? I'm just going to do this now, because it's going to kill... Uh of something of theirs. There we go. Dagon, Succubus. I'm not going to be able to copy some Dagons because of the huge amount of uh, An interesting control my opponent had. Because it was all locking and destroying. But yeah, they're, they're basically done. Um, I have all the time in the world to start playing extra cards. Uh, Succubus. And then Arakas Queen. On to Dagon, we get another Deathwish unit, and then we can, after they're done watching me, they can get the Arakas drones, and then just do bloop, 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 and we got like 62 points at the end there, that was not bad. Alright, a very weird match. Next up we have another Nilfgaard deck, Assimilate this time, so that actually might work in our favor. And we start, so that's already really good. I do need Brewess if I want to pull this off. So usually, mulligan-wise, I just get rid of like the lower... I keep one Succubus, but the uh, the Bronze Dead Wish units are usually the better option. I have too many consuming... Holy shit. Okay, definitely not ideal. Um, let's start with... The, ooh, this is a very bad hand to start with. Okay, let's start with the Foglet. I had one assimilate test match, by the way, where my opponent like copied my Keltalus twice. And then I had them resurrected. Okay, so that's going to be Golden Lock. Um, I had them resurrected, so there were like three or four Keltaluses on the board. And they just started killing each other. It was very, very funny. Okay, so that's going in the back. I'll just... I could play um, the Succubus now. But it's not necessary yet, I think. Uh, not the Succubus. Not the, definitely not the Succubus. I don't want to give my opponent more Succubi. I meant Keltalus because they have... Uh, they're starting to gain more units than we have. And Keltalus, the... the, the the way that we combine both Keltalus and Dagon actually give us a few options in the sense that we have both the Keltalus play, which is powerful in its own right, and the Dagon play. Um, although our hand is not looking good for either of those options right now. Okay. But I can do that again. I mean, you can do that again as well. 
you can just play another Tourney Joust. And then I have an 8 point Foglet on the board. <laughs> there we go. Now I have an 8 point Foglet on the board. I really don't want to play Succubus here. But I'm practically running out of options. Um, Because I could play Keltalus, but for now it's going to be useless. I could consume the Foglet, but then I have like a really big unit. Succubus I really want to avoid. Because then they can start copying the succubus. Although at, at this point, does that matter? It might actually not matter. I'll just put it there. It might get stolen. But we'll see what happens. If it gets stolen, then we can just kill Tullus anyway. Okay, we did get spying. But not too much of a problem there just yet. Uh, I'm going to put it in the graveyard. Um... Just so we go under the amount of units that our opponent has. And then we can put Keltalus on the board. And just grab the round that way. Steal Diplomacy. They might now tap Dolduloc. We get a Nekirot. Are they going to tap? No. Okay. Big Dragon. Um, I could tap the Fog now actually. I'll just do that, just to get the points on the board. And there we go. Although I do reduce my opponent's units now. But if they just tap the the lock, okay, there we go. That's also good. Um, I do miss out on the Seleno Harpy combo. Um, but yeah, not too much of a problem there. There we go, first round is ours. Against Nilfgaard, it's basically always the same... Um, flow if you win round one you push round two it's always the same um especially if we can get some good cards now <laughs> that the game is giving us any um uh, let's get rid of this we get a succubus at least so we can start doing some real damage that way i'll get rid of the pallor and we got k -Rom. that is not good let me tell you that is definitely not good let's start with the defender I'm gonna just push all out. I would love to have used like an Arakas Queen combo, but since we didn't get Brewis in the first round, we get a Purify there though. So if I copy the Cave Troll, I'm gonna just have my Witch's Sabbath will be two Cave Trolls and Keltalus. So I'll just do that, I suppose. There might be a lock and I can't, I don't have a Purify. If that happens, I'm also fine with it. I wanna keep. The Arcas Queen alive because I want to have those four points for the Arcas Nest. I'm that, I'm that annoying. So I'm just gonna eat the Cave Troll. It might get Karate Heatwave as well. I'm not gonna use the charge. If I can get Karate Heatwave out of the deck now, that's also good. Okay, we get Young Calvert. Okay. I'll put the Succubus down. There might be another. There might be another um, lock in there, but I'm gonna risk it. Because the Doldy Lock on our opponent's side is a copy, so we still have our own Doldy Lock as well. So we have a third Succubus if you want to. So the risk is quite minimal. Uh, we get Spying on the Arca screen. Not, did they just use the leader ability? Oh crap. They could use Witch's status, stupid. Are they just gonna put... And why would you do that? That just gave me the advantage. Because... <laughs> that gave us the second Sereno Harpy back. Um, and this is also gonna happen. So a 22 point unit behind the defender. Yeah, I think we already won with that. And now I can get back... Do they still have three units? No. So I don't use Witch's Sabbath now. Uh, the Keltalus, by the way, your opponent's units, if you use Witch's Sabbath, do not get purified. Uh, purified. Doomed. So the Keltalus does not have Doomed right now. So in the next round, I can, I can replay it. I think our opponent has used their leader ability. I could push this further, but I'm not going to be able to use Witch's Sabbath. Although it would be stupid to just leave 19 points on the board. I'm going to use the second Seleno Harpy. Eat the Succubus. 
and then eat the RP egg. So I think that's enough of a head start to just pass in the next round, or I could just take it as well. But there's not enough like good targets for me to eat now. And I have like Keltal as double defender. And I'll just let them use all their fancy... Yeah, there we go. Succubus. But for some reason they didn't grab the Alaka screen. I'm gonna pass now. So 30 points ahead. And they used Arto. They used Calvate. So their next few cards are gonna be interesting. They're gonna be good. But yeah, I think that's gonna be a rage quit. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, rage quit. Victory. Almost fell asleep there. All right, after another long time, we get another Nilf Guardian <laughs> deck against us. Imposter this time. Uh, I guess we'll see how this one turns out. We do get Blue West immediately and a Defender, which is quite a good start. I'm going to get rid of the Succubus. Can you run this a little bit early? Um, can get rid of the Siren and we get Dagon. Hmm, not the best starting combo. I would have loved Keltullus, because that's really funny against Nilfgaard. A random unit, okay. And boost self by its power. Let's just put the Defender down first. We might... It's a very good trigger for, like, Yennefer's Invocation, as we've seen in the other match as well. And then that card is gone. I don't need to worry about it anymore. It took my Defender, which is good, because that's what the Defender is there for. It's trying to get rid of uh, those cards. So it's either going to take Torati or Yennefer's Invocation. There's plenty of cards that that can uh, just pull. And if it does, it's done its job. That's just as simple as that. We get Matahuri, which gives us another card. Sadly, one of the crappier cards that I would have loved to keep in my deck. But it's in my deck a bit a little bit further, so it might be able to pull off the combos that I want to pull off. So, Druess, as we did before. Let's put her on the board. I don't need to consume her just yet, because it would be really hefty of our opponent to just say, okay, now I'm going to purify the defender and then use my leader ability. Basically, not something that's going to happen. So we do have all the time in the world. We can use the Seleno Harpy on the first, on Brewers, and then the second one on the next uh, go around. A bit lacking for good consumers here. Now we get a purify, but no lock. Okay, that was basically nothing. That was a card that just purified the defender away, and that was it. Okay, that means that I'm gonna spread out my cards a little bit. So I'm gonna eat the brewer's ritual, getting us two more cards, and that's our first succubus. So guard her with our lives. I mean, it's fine. The only way that they can take care of the succubus is by banishing her in some way. Uh, now we get either on. Yes, oh, this is gonna be one of those stupid gimmick, de gimmick decks, isn't it? Um, there's not much I can do about that. So that's just boost as many points as possible, I suppose. There we go. Fog and a fancy harpy egg at the same time. And then I think I might even just pass, depending on what this is going to be. Because if it's a gimmick, I, I don't really have a good counter against, like, stupid gimmicks. Like, spamming a lot of... I don't even know what this is going to be. We'll, we'll see soon enough, I suppose. Oops. Alright, that's just a stratagem. That was weird, they just tossed a card away. Is that, how, is that how that works? That's not how that works, they just tossed a card away. I need to eat that. I've seen people do that before. I don't know why. Because then the next thing that I do is just eat that. And it disappears because it's doomed. Don't know why people do that. I still don't. So I'll just put the bridge troll down because I'm a troll myself. And then just eat the fucking thing. Because my opponent just gave me seven points for free. I don't know why they do that. I don't think they realize how the card works. Because giving it to me in a Death Wish deck just, just gives me seven points. <laughs> there we go, yeah. I'm 34 points ahead, but that was not because of me. 
It's weird. And there we go. So Dagon has now transformed. And I'm going to try and pull it off. We'll see how far we get with this. But um, yeah, we have Abaya. We have Aragas Queen. We have a Purify if we need it. I don't need the spores, I think. And we have Witch's Sabbath. Mm, Siren is actually good. It's another consume. So let's finish redrawing. And I go first. I can just pull the Defender back out. Yeah, let's do that. Because I don't have Kaltellus anyway, so let's pull the Defender back out. Uh, and then I'll put Dagon on the board. They get Idaran back, which I'm really curious to see what they, that they wanted to do with Idaran. Purifying. <laughs> They are obsessed with purifying, and they get a defender on their board now. Two, actually. Which is even funnier, I guess. Alright. Um, they go over here, I suppose, where there's a lot of units. So now, the only thing that would hurt would be a Banish or Yennefer's Invocation on Dagon. And we get a reset on the leader ability. Okay. So that means that next turn they can lock it. I think I'm fine. It's going to go up to three and the next turn I can purify it. So I'm just going to put down the siren. You and just act hard. like nothing's happening. So they're, they're getting to move Dagons of their own. Um, and they reset it again. I could... No, I'm going to lose... The advantage here so this is now a tree it will go to four but then they can lock it again and i can purify it again so i'm gonna pause that's a weird deck man so yeah they tapped it now so that means that they lose card advantage and they can't get the dagons i, I wanted to because if they get the dagons up to five and they managed to get them destroyed which would have happened with my dagon um that would have not been good. So I'm just better off taking my chances with this. I still have my succubuses. Chuck, succubi, suck, succubi, succubi, boy. Um, which is okay. I think I can spawn like a bunch of them. So to complement that, I just need a lot of consumes. That's a lot of consumes, right? Consumes all the way. Maybe one purify. Maybe a Caltullus. That would be nice. I think I have like a. 66% chance to grab him now. Her now. They do still have a lock. So I'm gonna get rid of the siren. Okay, we get Keltalus. And our opponent goes first. I have card advantage. Double lost, say. Not that that's gonna change much. Okay, you get a card on top of their deck. So I'm just gonna use all the lock on the succubus. I'm just a sexy see what happens. This is basically bait, because I have another one. So even if they now nuke this from orbit, it's fine. Okay, so they pulled the card that they just put on top. So whatever it was, it was something that they wanted to really keep alive. They don't play with imprisonment, right? It's just spawning, right? Yeah, okay. So even with the Arakas Queen, it's going to be limited... Yeah, so let's consume the succubus. I know it's gonna not come back okay, but I don't have it's gonna be good, I mean. That's fine, we have plenty of other ones. This is basically imposter bait. Just like saying like, hey, maybe you should use your leader ability on this fancy huge spider queen thing. And then let me just eat it. There we go. There we go. Imposter bait. Transform into a copy of a base unit. Succubus. Probably would have been better to also get another Paracas Queen out, I think, but I could start Keltolusing, by the way. There's no need for me to grab this Purify now. I'm just gonna put the big dragon on the board. There we go. And now the lock is gone. And they get a bunch of extra turns, so Kaltolis is basically guaranteed to kill at least a single point every turn. Unless they nuke it from orbit now. In which case, that's also still fine. Please nuke it from orbit. Play a unit from their deck. That's a tactic. Might be like bribery or something. Nope. 
Imperial Diplomacy. Just add more units on the board. That's fine. That is absolutely A-OK -okay and fine. Purify and damage a unit. Uh, if I purify, I do get Galtellus on my own face right now, but I'm going to purify it and not trigger the um, ability yet. The, the consume. I could, but I'm not going to yet. Um, I don't know why this is highlighted. We're not yet at Adrenaline 4. That's weird. Because now I can use Abaya on the Araka screen, get another Succubus, which I wouldn't have been able to do, I think, if it's locked. Because that, that wish ability is locked, so even if you use Abaya to say, okay, I want to trigger that, that wish ability, it's blocked, so it doesn't trigger. On Aeromancy on Tourney Joust. Trying to kill the dragon still. Um, which is still fine, actually. Uh, so now Abaya. Trigger this. And now I can eat... I could eat the queen, but I don't really need to eat the queen. I can just eat the succubus. That's a better option. Um, it's just going to destroy a drone. It's fine. They're really focusing on the Kaltalas, but the Kaltalas is no longer the problem. Roderick of Dentine. Coup de Gras on... Fine, I guess. Just take the dragon. It's fine. Take it. I have plenty of drones where that came from. I could get... I'm gonna get another succubus right next to the one that we already had. I don't have a dirty mind. There we go. Triggers the triumph. This should be good. We got out of the, this with the, the succubus. Combo. And we do still have like the option to get a few more Arcas drones on the board. If we need to. But I don't think we need to. And Purify again. That deck had three Purify options. I have no idea why. There we go. And now we've reduced... Oh, we haven't really reduced our um, unit count here, but... There we go. Two more Succubi on the board. 22 points ahead, so... Unless we now get, like, even Erden wouldn't finish this off. I don't think there's a way they can get out of this. So yeah, we get the reset, but it's it's fine. Um, I'm not even going to push this any further, Cleef form. <laughs> there we go. Still no Dagon train. Okay, I gotta be honest, this was such a weird recording session. I had never had this many forfeits <laughs> in a single session. I had five including the rage quit from one of the matches that you just saw. But I think it, it's a combination of the two facts that, of course, I, I wanted to show off the Dagon combo. I have not been able to do this in like eight matches I just recorded, just because of the, the amount of forfeits and of the fact that Keltalus pulled its weight as well. Um, or there was a lot of Kriati Heatwave in the matches that I played now as well. But as I said, there's a lot of ways you can copy Dagon. I'll try to get another match recorded where we actually see that in action. But this is just a powerhouse of a deck. Uh, the only time that I lost now was against a, a similar deck that just played Dagon first and over, overwhelmed me with cards and I just didn't pull the cards that I needed. Um, so that's probably the one and only weakness. If you don't pull your tutors in time, then things can get ugly. Um, especially against the Mir. Uh, but other than that, really really extremely powerful deck and that's gonna sadly be it for this video i'm gonna again i'm gonna try and record another match where we do get the dagon train but we didn't get any uh in, in this video sadly uh so we'll get back to you on that but um again if you like this video don't forget to like it uh, using the buttons down below if you have any feedback on the deck let me know as well uh, i've been having a lot of ton uh, tons of fun with it uh but uh, your experience might differ so as always, thank you again enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next video of Grand Edge. Goodbye, stay nutty.